Today, we'll hear news from the FDA and questions about dietary supplements. All this and more starts right now on OnClive News Network. Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Jones. A new option is now available for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer who are facing a poor prognosis. Last week, the FDA approved ramucirumab in combination with Fulfiri as a second-line treatment for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer. The approval was based on the double-blind Phase three RAISE trial. In the trial, over 1,000 patients were randomized to receive Fulfiri with or without ramucirumab. Both the median overall survival and median progression-free survival were significantly better in the ramucirumab arm. Neutropenia, fatigue, hypertension, and diarrhea were the most common adverse events, grade 3 or above, occurring at a higher rate on the ramucirumab arm compared with the placebo arm. Ramucirumab is already FDA approved for gastric and non-small cell lung cancer. In more FDA news, crizotinib is already approved for patients with non-small cell lung cancer that harbors ALK rearrangements. Now, it has received FDA breakthrough therapy designation for patients with ROS1 positive non-small cell lung cancer. The decision was based on a phase one study published last year in the New England Journal of Medicine, which showed response and survival benefits in this subgroup of lung cancer patients. Lead author, Dr. Alice T. Shaw from the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center explained that this is the first definitive study to establish crizotinib's activity in a large group of patients with ROS1 positive lung cancer and to confirm that ROS1 is a bona fide therapeutic target in those patients. The dietary supplement industry is a booming business in the United States, but there are new data showing sometimes they may do more harm than good. Dietary supplements can be beneficial for those who may not be reaching the daily recommended allowance of essential nutrients. Some studies have shown supplements benefit in preventing cancer or reducing risk of progression. By contrast, Dr. Timothy Byers of the University of Colorado Cancer Center reports the potential increase in cancer risk with the use of these supplements when taken in excess. We studied thousands of patients for 10 years who were taking dietary supplements and placebos. We found that the supplements were actually not beneficial for their health. In fact, some people actually developed more cancer while on the vitamins. He noted studies on beta carotene, leading to increased risk in lung cancer, and folic acid associated with an increase of colorectal polyps. While supplementation at recommended doses can provide health benefits, the best source of vitamins and nutrients is a healthy, balanced diet. Last week, we shared information about two trials looking at treatments for metastatic melanoma. Dr. Eric Whitman from Atlantic Health in New Jersey shared his insights on the Keynote 006 and the Checkmate 069 trials. We would like to invite you to watch his full interview about these trials and thoughts about sequencing and the timing of treatments. To hear more from Dr. Whitman, please visit the website on your screen. Finally, this week we would like to highlight the OncLive Insights program titled Growing Options for RAI Refractory Differentiated Thyroid Cancer. In this video series, doctors Michael Tuttle, Robert Haddad and Matthew Taylor provide practical and insightful information on diagnosis, the newest treatments, and the ongoing challenges of managing patients with thyroid cancer. We invite you to view this video series by visiting the website on your screen. And that'll do it for this week. Thanks so much for watching OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.